And welcome to Good Morning Nintendo, where we come together every week to talk about the video game news and things that we're playing. Uh, as always, I'm Dane, and joined with me, as always, it's my wonderful co-host, Dominic. And well, we're I I before we get started, I actually just got slightly off kilter here. Um, do do do. There's a new thing I have to do, and I'm not looking at a show note, so I, I screwed myself up. Uh, I just want to say thank you to 40 Snowfake 40 for following us last week, and thank you for joining the show. I'll feel, I actually have the chat up this week, so I don't think we're going to really be reading anything off of that, but well, feel free to add your comments in as we go along. But I think we're let's just get started with our normal thing, and Dom, what have you been up to this week? This week has actually been really busy. So um, I have a bunch of stuff planned for this month, which I have one video that's going to be uploaded on the 7th and then another video that's being uploaded on the 12th. But in the meantime, I kind of wanted to try some new things out. So this is going to sound terrible, but I, I don't care. It, 3DS and a DS capture card, they're just, they're just, they're un, they are priced ridiculously. Ridiculously, almost upwards of thousands of dollars. Not going to happen. Oh, yeah, that's so right. I decided I would emulate DS games if I wanted to take a look at them. And I own the game, so I, I own the game. Um, and it got me thinking. I was like, well, what if I can emulate 3DS games so I can review some 3DS games? Tried that, and my, my I think I, tr I downloaded a Citra and got 3D Land running, and it was running at like six frames per second. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, it was like it was awful. So I was like, it's not even worth it. I could probably do it on my MacBook Pro, but I was like, I'm not even gonna bother. But I'll I'll figure out some way to do those. And then um, been playing um, uh, uh shoot, what have I? Oh, I've been playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, uh, Rescue Team DX. Um, oh, what else have I been playing? Oh, I've been playing a Twilight Princess too. Um, I'm about halfway through. I just um. You know what? Just a quick hot take. Twilight Princess is my least favorite Zelda game. But anyway. <laughs> um, well, what, so, what makes you say that? I just like... What, what's... It's just like... It's just... I don't know. It just kind of falls into the more Zelda for me. I mean, I like don't... It, it's like... I, I'm not I, I'm not a huge fan of Wolf Link in the slightest. I, I like hit the idea and I like the design, but I hate playing as Wolf Link. I hate it. Um... I like Midna, but it just feels Zelda E. Like, and and I know, and I know that's crazy to say because it's like I like Zelda games because they feel Zelda E, but it's just like falls into the like just more Zelda for me in a weird way. Still, still, I mean, there is no bad. Like, it's still a good game. And Wait. then um, I've been um, oh, I'm trying to marathon all of the Resident Evil titles all the way up to the lead up to to eight. So I'm right now playing through the first Resident Evil, the um. On the from the Origins collections on the Switch, which has a fixed camera angle, and man, those games are, uh, gosh, they're 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 something. Yeah, but that's that's pretty much it. What about you? Uh man, I'm so glad that you asked, Dom, because I want to tell you. Oh, I should have practiced this as well about a little game called Infamous First Light. All right, and my girl Fetch. Yeah, I like your jacket. Thank you. It's, there is a reason for this. So, having not ha didn't have the PlayStation for mo like most Wait, of its life. Before you get into this, what is Infamous First Light? We're get that's I, I'm gonna I tell know, you. I know of the Infamous games. What was that like? A, I've never heard of First Light. So Infamous First Light is basically almost like a DLC or a standalone story. It's a prequel to Infamous Second Son, where you play as Fetch. Oh, her real name, I can't remember what her real name is, but she goes by the alias Fetch the whole time. But she's like this grungy punk rock girl or whatever. But so like, hence why I put on my battle vest today is just like, because throughout the game she wears one. And, but. Is it like a, um, is it like an uncharted, uh, is it like a, like a no, Miles no. Morales to Spider-Man kind of thing? Or? Yes. It's, it's all a third right. person. I, like, like, let me, let me, get, let me go through it. All right. Oh, it's a third person action adventure game, but like you're a superhero, but like 
known as a conduit, but all of your superpowers are based, are like, you need an external fuel source to use all your powers. And Fetch, her powers are based off of Neon. So, like, the fact that you have, like, this grungy punk rock um, girl, like, that's running around, like, using Neon to power all of her powers. So, like, she's a speedster, so everywhere she goes, she leaves, like, this neon pink trail behind her. And I was just like, oh. And, like, she shoots out, like, neon pink energy blasts, and when I played this game, it's like, it's a short game, it takes about five hours to play through the main story, but I was super excited because, like, I love all, like, I mean, like, I love, like, the battle vest type of aesthetic, but also, let me grab something off the wall here. This is my Nerf gun, which I painted all up in neon colors. So, yeah, that looks awesome. and like, this is like a fully modded Nerf blaster, but it's like, I have a thing for the bright colors as well. Yeah, the neon, I can see so, it. So, like, uh... like, Infamous First Light is just like, they, they like, someone opened up my head, took like a swab of things that I liked and made a game out of it. But like, it isn't, I mean, it's not like playing it it was like a 7.5 game i would have called it like a 7.58 game and when i went and checked the metacritic that's about what it was at but like oh it does this in with only being a five hour story they did something interesting you kind of get what happens do you mind if i spoil the game for you at all um to be honest i I don't think I'll ever play the infamous games. I, for some reason, I just don't know why I won't. Yeah, I mean, I mean that. Go ahead, dude. <laughs> oh, so but like in this game, it's a five-hour story, but it's played. It's through a, a series of flashbacks, most of it, where you have this person that like uh, runs a military branch, like asking you questions about, oh, what happened to you? Why did you get here? So you get so throughout this. So you're telling her back the story about what that you where Fetch is getting being used and kind of like she's out to save her brother, but how it ends up is you get to this point at, and the end of the story where something horrible has happened to her and she just uh, and it's just like and that's where you found me that's where all that's when you all showed up, and then you find out at the very end of this game that you've that the person running this military branch has been manipulating you through this. She's just like getting you to relive these memories and talk about your, your memories of what happened. And then a door opens in front of you in this facility that you're being held at. And the person that was responsible for everything is right there in front of you. And what happens is she wanted you to just relive those memories so that you're angry enough to just attack this, attack and kill this person. And she's basically making, trying to manipulate you into turning you into this weapon. And I just felt like it was a really good, like, wow. It, it, like, it hit me hard. It was a character I really loved. And I was just like, that was something different that I haven't heard anyone really talk about for seven years. And I was just trying to, platinum that but it like most of the platinum most of the trophies around it are these challenge rooms which are kind of difficult i mean like i only got like three or four left to do but oh uh, but like it kind of takes away from the experience a little but another but moving on to other things i played this week we i also all have gone through a lot of things just trying to get my psn level up because I've just, I've hit a phase of what I am calling Greg Milleritis, where I was just like, I want to get really competitive about my PSN score. And like, I went through and like, I played My Name is Mayo and My Name is Mayo 2, which are games that you're just playing to get those platinum trophies on, because like, they're 99 cents and they take like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. 
but it was literally clicking a jar of mayo 10,000 times. Oh my god. Yes. Really? Yes. I mean, oh, the yeah, I My Name is Mayo 2 adds, like, a few little, like, mini-game type things into it, but it's still clicking a thing 10,000 times. So... It's funny, you've played uh, what seems like a really memorable game, and then, then we go to Miles. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, this great game, I love it, it just resonates with me. <laughs> and then I played My Life as Mayo. <laughs> yeah. But, like, yeah, like, I'm playing some narrative stuff as well. Like, I'm playing, like, I'm working my way through, oh, Batman the Evil Within, and I went back and I had Life is Strange, which I had played through before. And I just decided to go back and get all the collectibles through it. And the, I forgot how strange that game gets up by the end. I don't think I've played... I have never played any of the Telltale games or... Um, don't, don't. Like, I, like, I got... Strange one or two. I was trying to... I watched your stream, though, and it seemed like they're just... just I don't... I was, I was watching the Batman one, and I was just like, this game's not for me. Like, I was just like, holy guac, I just couldn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, forcing myself to play it right now. Like, there was this whole bit when we were going, when we were going up an elevator, and the game just bugged out super hard. Like, none of the model, like, only one of the characters in the whole elevator just was doing any of their animations, and everyone else was just standing there super stiff like not even moving their lips or anything i was just like wow this would have been great to have actually seen the scene play out and i tried like reloading it and doing it twice oh crap i need to change one second all oh, so yeah that's what i've basically been doing we so moving right along before we get into majority of the news i want to talk about some of the big releases we have for this month so in the month of February, we have uh, the the Neo Complete Collection, which actually released for PS5 today. Uh, it retails for sixty nine ninety nine. I know it's kind of steep, but I would encourage you to purchase it if you haven't. It you get up to one hundred twenty frames per second, ray tracing, three D audio, and obviously, um, hopefully, native four K, depending on um, what you're playing it on. And both i've played i played a lot of neo one super solid games if you like the souls souls born games or if you just like games with a good layer of difficulty i would highly recommend highly recommend picking those up then next friday february 12th we have you guys probably already know this super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury alongside the mario themed switch will be releasing on that day too no pre-orders so it's going to be a first come first serve basis then we have Persona 5 Strikers, and that's going to be coming out February 20th. Um, don't know if I'll be picking... I know I'll be getting it, but I don't think it's a day one purchase for me, but I'm sure most people who enjoy the Persona series, and I liked 5 a lot, will get it. And then lastly, we have Bravely Default 2, which will be releasing February 26th. Now, I... This is a weird one for me, because I really want to play Bravely Default 2. But so, like I'm not allowing myself to play it until I play the first one, and I don't know why I have that mentality with it. But yeah, definitely gonna pick it up at uh, some point in time. But um, probably a little later after it comes out. It depends. Unless it gets like crazy good reviews and it's like the greatest JRPG in the world, then I will. So with that out of the way, I want to get into the first bit of news, which this one's going to be a little long because I, I want to go over most of the uh, the titles that we have on here. But if you guys don't know, on February 1st, Nintendo updated us with their financial report. And so we have sales numbers for hardware and software and then a little some other tidbits that they uh, that they gave us with the Q&A meeting. So first things first, the Nintendo Switch has sold 79.87 million units, which has literally outsold the 3DS. That is insane. The Switch has been in the market for... Uh, technically, it's in its fifth year right now, and it's already outsold the 3DS, which came out in 2011. That is mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean... I was like, that's a bit crazy. Like, I was just like, I, like, I thought, I mean, 
I thought, like, the 3DS was kind of bundled in with the 2DS. I mean, like, the regular DS for some reason. All. And, like, I thought, that's why I thought that number was crazy. Because I was just, like, I thought it was, like, over 100,000 or something of those were all. I mean, even 100, I mean, like, over 100,000 of those were sold or something like that. So, that's why I was kind of shocked about it. I was just, like, okay. But yeah, it's just like yes, Family of Systems I believe was over a hundred fifty four million. That's Nintendo's best selling um t- console, and the Wii's at a hundred one million, which the Switch will definitely overtake. It might even overtake it by the end of this physical year, which would be insane. Yeah. So, with the hardware numbers out of the way, we will go right to the software. So, coming in first, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at 33.41 million copies sold. Oh, that, like, isn't... Actually, that that, that, it doesn't really... I'm not surprised by that at all, just because, I mean, you know Mario Kart's attachment rate. I don't know how many Switches you sold when you're at GameStop, but I can only imagine how many Mario Kart 8 came with, or uh, left the store with. And what's pretty cool is if you take Mario Kart 8 sales from the Wii U and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's sales, it's the best-selling Mario Kart game. Overtaking Wii, which sold 37 million copies. Then we have the uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which is at 31.18 million copies sold. In under a year, it has already sold that much which is insane. It's honestly, at some point in time, it's going to probably become the best-selling title in Japan. I mean, isn't it, like, at, like, 50 or, like, 70%? Like, oh, what's the top? Like, I'm sorry, I'm, like, half paying attention to this because, like, I'm also, like, I forgot to change the stream um, title. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, um, but, like, I'm trying to listen. I was just like, what was the number that it sold again? Uh, Animal Crossing sitting at 31.18 million copies sold. So it's a pretty good, I mean, it's a pretty good attachment rate. Um, it'll probably, I don't think it'll become the best selling title on Switch. I think Mario Kart's always going to hold that just because it's, it's Mario Kart. I mean, let's be realistic here, but I definitely think it'll be the best selling game in Japan of all time. It's already closing that gap on Pokemon, um, red, blue, and green. Then we have... Quite a big dip. Uh, Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate sitting at twenty two point eight five million units, which <sighs> it's it's pretty much every game on this list that's in this series has become the best selling, excluding a few, um, which is insane. To put it into perspective for you, the previous best selling Smash Bros. game was Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii, which sold thirteen million copies. And then, obviously, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which is already 10 million more than that. And it's, it's, it's legs, it's still got room to grow. This one blows my mind when I really think about it. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild has sold 21.45 million copies. That is astronomical for a Zelda, like, for a Zelda title to put out numbers like that is just insane. Oh, yeah. That, that's another fact I, I heard about this week. That Animal, I mean, I'm not really a numbers guy most of the time. Mostly I just want to know, like, what games are coming out and what they're about. But an interesting fact is that all Animal Crossing New Horizons has now outsold all of the Metroid series. Oh, yeah. Literally, this single title has outsold all. It's, it's outsold Metroid, Pikmin, Star Fox. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's... It's a force to be reckoned with. It's probably I, a huge role into why this Nintendo sold so many Switches this quarter. Yeah, I mean, like, we'll definitely be seeing this, this series more and more often now. This and they're going to be spending some more time on them. Oh, heck yeah. Heck yeah. New Horizons will be updated this, that, and the fourth. It'll, it'll, uh, yeah, well, that, that game is going to have some long legs. Um, yeah, Breath of the Wild at 21.45, which is, it's, uh, it's, I'm happy that it's there, but it still blows my mind to see a, Breath, a Zelda title sell that well. It's just like, to put it in that perspective for you, the previous best-selling Zelda title didn't even hit 10 million. So it's just like, whoa. 
This one surprised me a bit. I honestly thought it'd be a little more, but it's still doing extremely well. So we have Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, which is at 20.35 million copies sold. Um, it is now the third best selling Pokemon games in the series, just right behind Gold and Silver. It'll probably e get close to passing Gold and Silver, might not. It's It depends. It's about 3 million shy. We'll have to see. This one annoys the heck out of me. This is Super Mario Odyssey, and it's sold 20.23 million copies. To put that into perspective for you, that is almost more than Super Mario Galaxy 1 and 2 combined. And we have still haven't seen a sequel for it. I mean, I just imagine so... that's, that's near the works. I mean, like, oh, another thing that I heard about this week was the... What was people actually have gotten previews or hands-on with Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and it seems so like it seems like a like a lot bigger than I had originally anticipated it would be. But it seems like they're almost like this is this clearly looks like some sort of test for another Mario game. So That'd be great. Yeah, it's just it like it definitely looks like Bowser's Fury has a little more of a like a sandbox element to it, not as linear as 3D World, which is definitely going to be fun. And I, I, I would, I don't honestly prefer a sequel to Odyssey though, if they do anything, just because that was f such a great game and I would love more of that. Like a toned down version and less star, less power moons and like good, good power moons. Yeah, it's just, but like, it's just like, imagine each of the worlds of, what I've heard is like, imagine each of the worlds from Odyssey but they're their own island on this giant lake. So like that like it's like they're a bit small like they're a bit smaller than the worlds that I, from what I've heard. But it's just like imagine if like you took Isle Delfino and instead of having to be like on a hub that went to all the other different places, you could just go over the entire island. That's, oh, that's gonna be awesome. That's kind of like what I like. It's kind of in that kind of scope, or I mean, not like that. It's I don't think it's that big, but like I think it, it kind of gives you a idea of what it is they're kind of going for here. So yeah, I heard it takes like three hours to finish, and then if you want a hundred percent, it's like six to seven, I believe, which I mean, is pretty beefy. It's not bad. Yeah. So it's, it's a lot more. I'm a lot more interested in it than I was when they first announced it. And the cool thing is you can jump straight into it from the beginning. You do not have to play through 3D World, which is awesome because I've played through that game so many times. I mean, I would do it again, but I'm like, I just want to kind of jump into Bowser Shuri. Yeah. I'm... So next we have uh, Super Mario Party, which this one is... Okay, this is... Well, it's the best-selling Mario Party game now, but it's at 13.82 million copies sold. Um, I don't really have much to say on that. I got Super Mario Party... I think it wasn't great. Uh, I just don't think they'll ever... They will never be as good as they were on the GameCube. Uh, I hate to say it, but it's true. <laughs> Pokemon, Let's Go Pikachu, and Let's Go Eevee. This is actually an interesting one, too. This is sitting at 13 million copies sold. And this just kind of goes to show how strong nostalgia is for the Kanto region, because obviously red, blue, and green uh, sold 31 million copies. They, you know kicked off the franchise then we have pokemon yellow which sold 14 around 14 to 15 million copies then we had fire red and leaf green which sold 10 uh, 12 million copies so this is already outsold this is now what the the fourth time they've given us given us kanto region games but and it they're still performing well i mean this is outsold fire red and leaf green so People still want their Kanto region games, which is, um, I mean, I don't know. I'm okay, but it's like, whoa, can we not? <laughs> then this this actually makes me happy. We have Splatoon 2 sitting at 11.90 11 million copies sold, which is awesome because Splatoon 2 is great. And honestly, what this tells me is that the, the one of the best things the Wii U gave us, if not the best thing, was Splatoon. Yeah, I mean, like, that was, it was like one of the key reasons... That I bought my Wii Wii U was like I actually managed to get the Smash Splat set for it. Oh my God! But That's all right, they bundled both of those games That's for like three hundred dollars. <laughs> so it was like the price of the system, and you got the two games for free. But like I wanted to play like that. I wanted to play that, and also of course like the Zelda ports, and then 
Like, they kept saying, oh, the Zelda Wii U, it's gonna be just next year, it's just next year. And, but... Newsflash, it was never next year. <laughs> yeah. But... So then we have new... Okay, this one's kind of interesting. So, and this just goes to show what happens when people actually own a Nintendo console and they actually buy the games. So, New Super Mario Bros. U, when that came out, that the that sold 5.81 million copies. It's the worst-selling New Super Mario Bros. game because it came out on the Wii U and no one owned the Wii U. And people gave that game so much crap because it just felt so samey and it was just more of the New Super Mario Bros. series and people were tired of it. So you'd imagine if people were, if Nintendo was to port that, people would be fed up and wouldn't buy it again, right? No. <laughs> New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is at 9.82 million copies sold. Almost at 10 million copies. Probably going to definitely hit that and double the sales of the Wii U version. So now that we got the heavy hitters out of the way, these are some other tidbits that Nintendo gave us. So we have Luigi's Mansion 3, which... This is this is probably honestly why they bought Next Level. This isn't this is pretty good. So Luigi's Mansion 3 has sold 9.13 million copies, making it the best-selling game in the series, it far surpassing the original Luigi's Mansion and Dark Moon. Then we have this one was actually kind of funny because I saw a post about this on uh, Twitter. Then we have Ring Fit Adventure sitting at 8.68 million copies sold, and someone said it's the best-selling JRPG. <laughs> Of, of this, of this, uh, it, it outsold Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's funny. Yeah. Then we have um, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This actually did a little less than I thought it would, uh, 8.32 million. And it's, it, you're probably going to see a huge sales spike in this with like, in like the last week of March. But I mean, not, not terrible. Um, next we have Super Mario Maker 2 sitting at... 6.91 million copies, not too bad. I thought it'd do a little better, but it's it's still doing still make, you know, good numbers. Then we have Paper Mario the Origami King sitting at 3.05 million copies sold. We have Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity which is 3 three and a half million copies shipped. So not sold through but shipped. This one kind of surprised me. Clubhouse Games. What do you think Clubhouse Games is sitting at? I feel like I heard something about Clubhouse Games. Oh, uh, um, I don't know. I don't really Six two million copies. All right. Pretty good for like a budget kind of niche little mini game compilation. What's really interesting here, and this kind of made me like just realize how niche Pikmin was. I didn't even know, like know this. So Pikmin 3 Deluxe is now the best-selling Pikmin game in the series. It's only sold 1.94 million copies. So it's like, wow, like Pikmin was pretty niche if that's the threshold it had to pass to become the best-selling. Right. Um, then we have Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which is currently sitting at 1.48 million copies sold, which is awesome. It's, it's surpassed the sales of the 3DS and the Wii version, which is great. And then this one was kind of a kind of a miss for me. I thought it would do a lot better because it was kind of gimmicky. It was a toy. I still want it, but it's expensive. Mario Kart, a Mario Kart Live Home Circuit sold, and I don't, I didn't think they would count this because technically it's not really a like a package retail release. But um, one point zero eight million units uh, of Mario Kart Live Home Circuit sold. I Man, I think it was coming out in the holiday. It was just like getting toys and whatnot. It was just like I think that's. Um, when it first came out, it was pretty hard to find. <laughs> All right. So, moving right along in the next bit of news, there has been a PS5 update for God of War, which released earlier in the week, and you could download it now if you own God of War. If you don't own God of War, you and you own a PS5, you can get it from the PlayStation Plus collection. And I believe that they added up to 60 frames, or it's 60 frames per second and um, checkerboard rendering at 4K. So if you want to play God of War and get uh, the um, the enhanced version, go ahead and download that. Oh, I went and ahead and did that. The next, I'm sorry? I did that. Like, I, I jumped in, uh, I thought I had a, a cloud save of, like, when I finished the game. Like, oh, I was going to maybe go in for a few more Platinums. I was just like, 
but like won't my old cloud save was like less than like a third of the way through the game. This looks like it looks beautiful. Can't wait to play that it's a fair I might like once I clear up some of the other stuff that I really want to play more, I might jump jump back and go back into that. I I don't know, like I'll probably get back into God of War at some point in time, but God of War came at like a it came at a time where like I was kind of getting burnt out on PlayStation exclusives because PlayStation exclusives just fall into like I don't know. It's sometimes they just feel so similar to each other, and it's just like okay. I mean, they're third. They're per- that's a lot of third person action adventure games. Seriously, but they're so freaking solid. Where it's like, man, these are good. So moving right along, um, if you aren't aware of this game, so last gen. Um, on PS4, we had a game called Judgment. Now, this is from Ryuga. I don't know. I, I'm not going to even try to pronounce the name of the studio because I'll butcher it. But the people behind the Yakuza games. So there's a game called Judgment, which was a standalone release. It, it was similar to the Yakuza titles, but it was a kind of its own thing. That is also getting a re-release for PS5 and Xbox Series X. And oddly enough, coming to Stadia. And... Now, the interesting thing is with this, no free upgrades. So if you own the PS4 version, you have to buy the PS5 version. Um, I guess, I don't, I don't know why Sega didn't give you, is not going to give you that option, which I'm pretty sure they're giving you that option with Yakuza Like a Dragon when the PS5 version releases of that. But yeah, you're going to have to go buy this again, which I probably will. It's a really solid title on the PS4. Um so yeah, I'm pretty stoked on that. And it's only $39.99, so it's not gonna they're not gonna, you know, sell it to you at 70 bucks. So another piece of interesting news. <laughs> this one. Oh my gosh. So I was actually not surprised to hear this, but Stadia halting exclusive software development. Now they closed, I believe it was two major studios internally that they used for exclusives. And the first thing I thought about when I read this was, what exclusives did they even, <laughs> like, do? What exclusives were on Stadia? Like, I think I know of, like, one platforming one, I think, when it, like... I mean, I don't think, out, I don't think but... they had any major, like, they had announced a major game, like, something with a title. What they had done was they had come out at that, like, first Stadia Connect, I think it was called... Like, they showed all these demo, like, all these, like, proof of, like, concept ideas, and, like, oh, this is what you can do with this, but it was a lot very nebulous, because it was just, like, this is, like, you can, like, we can do, like, X number of instant, like, there was one game where you were, like, looking through, like, what I think was, like, 20 cameras or whatever, and it was just, like, you all were, these are all separately rendered instances of this world or something like that but like it was all this proof of concept stuff which they had been working on but for me this is like the nail on the coffin it's just like stadia came out and like people treated it like a joke and i think maybe in a world where covid hadn't been happening like people were actually out and about and away from systems they might have actually stood a bit of a chance but like this year, with everyone staying home, you either invested in a new system or some new hardware, and you didn't really need the... You weren't really looking for a cloud service to play your games off of. Like, everyone, like, upgraded their internet. Everyone upgraded their PC. Like, I'm sitting here... Like, last year, I had a Switch and one and a smaller TV. Now I have a bigger TV that's 4K... Uh, I got a second screen, I have a mic attached here, I have a tower rig, and, like, I got a light shining down from above. I was just like, if this isn't, like, what all 2020 did to people, I don't know what is. It's just like, yeah. oh. And I feel like if you, I mean, if you... If you were an entertainment business that that you were able to do independently at your home and you weren't thriving in 2020, then like, because obviously most people were indoors, so they were looking for things to do. So that was literally like Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo all had like record years, did phenomenally well because people wanted to play video games. 
and Stadia did, like did so poorly, so badly that they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to tone this down." I give it to the end of this year before they just close the doors. For the, I mean, they they're probably just like they've already started selling their controllers and stuff at various retailers so they're probably trying to off whatever they have now and just be done with it yeah i think so the writing was on the wall from the beginning for me i saw this coming from my, like we're not ready for it we're not ready for it and to to video games in general it's the the video game atmosphere and sony has said it nintendo has said it microsoft has said it. i can't stress this enough they have said countless times they will never stray away from home consoles because it's they always want a dedicated piece of hardware in the living room, in the bedroom, wherever you put it. Well, They're and also, leave that. and also, it's like you know, I mean, like where a PC, where a PC is such a nebulous thing, it's just like where it's just like a PC could be thousands of different specs. Whereas if you're just if you're a console manufacturer, you have like two or three specs. That's like these are the environments that we know our system is in like if we if these are the three different specs we need to hit for our game to run properly and run well then it's easy to much easier to program for that uh but like all okay. with well, yeah but like state going back to stadia stadia is just like you have to pay for the service and then you also need to buy the games a la carte with it it's just like yeah. But it's like it's like having Netflix and then buying the movies. Yeah, but like with all like your current competitor for Stadia is Xbox Game Pass, which is Game Pass Ultimate is fifteen dollars a month. You can play that you can play those games on your PC or your Xbox, or you can play them all on cloud with your phone, but then like or it's that's included with it and that's like two hundred some games that you can play. I mean, like, I don't think all 200 or those you can play on the cloud, but... or yeah, like You still have play. some stellar stuff from, from Microsoft on there. And like, Honestly, like, five of those games are worth it because they're so good. Yeah, but... Whereas in Stadia, their whole lineup is like, bleh. And, I mean, like, all... Xbox is pretty good. I mean, I tried playing Ori on... Ori and the Will of the West. I mean, not the Will of the West. Ori and the Blind Forest. On the first one, That's yeah, first one. on on my phone, and it ran okay. I mean, like with a precision platformer like that, it wasn't the best setup at all. But like playing games, like I think I played Spiritfarer a bit on that, or like even Halo, I played on the cloud, and that ran pretty well. It was just like. At fifteen dollars a month, and you get a bunch of games included. I feel like that's the that's the better option right now. It's it's actually it's very it's it's interesting that we're on this topic because it kind of rolls right into the next bit of news. So Sony has also given us a little update on um, how well the PS Five did. This is from the launch of the PS Five until the December thirtieth of twenty twenty. So in that time, Sony shipped. 4.5 million PlayStation 5s and 1.4 million PS4s. And here's the very interesting about interesting thing about the PS5 launch. And this is kind of puts things into perspective about just hardware and kind of ties into Stadia too with how they're saying the consoles are old news. So generally when any and when Xbox, Microsoft or Sony would release a console Believe it or not, they would record a loss for that quarter because they sell the hardware at a loss. The idea is you get it into so many households, they start the software piles up, that's where the money's coming in. But generally, they're, they're, they, it, they take a dip. They don't do well. The place, P, P, Sony is doing so well that even though they shipped, this is just, mind you, this is how much money that you have to make in order to do well because you're selling a... Five hundred and four hundred dollar device at a loss. So they sold four point five million PS fives at a loss, but recorded their highest earnings yet. That's how well their games are selling. That's how well PlayStation Plus is doing. That's how well their digital titles are doing. That's how well their services are doing. 
that they can still release a $400, $500 console at a loss, sell that many units, and record record profits. Yeah, I mean, like, I think all... I mean, like, I bought a $500 system, but, like, I'm I'm going through it, and I'm playing, like, all these all these games. Like, every week I come in here and tell you about, like, th- two or three different games I'm playing. And it's like, those weren't things that I had planned, and it's just like... And right now we're in the space where... I do, where like there's not a lot else going on, so it's just like there's they have this huge backlog of games that people haven't gotten to in the past and are just really finally do. getting to now, and it's just like and you get to like I'm playing stuff on PS2, I'm playing stuff from early PS4, like none of what I'm actually playing is like the new PS5 titles because like there hasn't really been any new PS5 titles. Oh. Well, hey, there has been. I mean, like, there a very been. few. I picked up the Neo collection today. <laughs> nah, I'm not about that. I'm not picking it up. <laughs> I'm touching okay. that. No, not dedicated. But I did pre order my first, um, I guess, my first dedicated PS5 game. I pre ordered uh, Resident Evil 8, which really isn't a PS5 game, but I was like, hey, my first like PS5 game. But yeah, I mean, they, they have a, a crazy, they have an amazing backlog of killer games to jump into um which is it, it great i mean it, it it goes to show that they could they can do that well while selling something at a loss and still record like and, and it also the titles speak for themselves like um miles morales we got an update on that that sold 4.1 million copies not as strong as the original spider-man but super solid probably a high attachment rate on the ps5 um so it'll be it'll be really interesting to see how well the PS5 is going to do and what's really going to be interesting is once we actually get units that are readily available. I that that's going to be interesting to me to see how well those do. I think the Xbox is probably going to take a quick dive pretty quickly cuz I pe- think people are going to be like and we talked about a little bit about this last week where I don't know. Personally, for me, when I go to the like, PS5, I'm like, oh, there's so much cool stuff I can play. The Xbox is just like, uh, like uh, you know, like it's a dedicated like video, like a console. Like I just have great games to play on it. Was whereas the Xbox is just like, yeah, I got some of those games, but like not all of them. <laughs> I don't know. It's just more more of like a, a, a piece of entertainment, I suppose. But next topic, this one is one that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. So, Dane, you probably know about this. Hmm? Nintendo reportedly canceled a Zelda TV, uh, a Zelda Netflix series, and a claymation version of Star Fox after leaks. That's weird. Yes. So I didn't know about I... the claymation. I mean, like, I had heard rumors of a uh, Zelda all... Oh. I Netflix thing, this. yeah, I yeah. It was like, it like I heard it was like ago. it's gonna be like Game of Thrones esque or whatever. And I was just like, like that was years ago. It's just like I can't believe they yeah. canceled it just because of leaks. It's just like if anything that like, got people like most people I heard about talking about were like excited or just like, well, let's see how this comes out or anything like that. And it's just like that would have been you know, Nintendo. They're super old school, stuck yeah. in their ways. Yeah, but it would have been fun to have seen those, but, I mean, I'm Claymation, <laughs> I'm kind of surprised that they would have gone with a Claymation, oh, Star Fox, though, because... It was, apparently it was like a Claymation or in the same vein as a Fantastic Mr. Fox, which I would love that. <laughs> that would have been, been awesome. That would have been weird, because I feel like the Claymation thing is just, like is either such a specific John, like, wouldn't you say claymation? Like, this is gonna be like a deep cut or like a weird cut, but like, I remember, like, I'm like, I really tie that a lot to all um, like, de- like, celebrity deathmatch. It was like this old claymation that show on MTV. Oh, yeah, it was like, well, I used to love that as a kid, which was like weird. It was like, but like, I'm just like, I think about that show, it was like. Why did I enjoy that? Oh, but it's yeah, just like, like one of those, like, I think that was like one of those guilty pleasure kind of shows where like you saw it on, you're like, is anyone in the room when I watch this? Yeah. But like, I don't know. It's just like, I, I don't know. We can I mean like there can be good claymation, but like, I don't know. I, I like, I feel like 
like an like a traditional anime or like a CG would have been better. I don't know. A Zelda anime. I would love that. And and you remember that that video we got from uh, Smash Bros on Wii U uh, Link against um Pit? Have Not you ever really. seen that? Nah, I don't remember it. What? Oh my god. I don't it's, it doesn't come to mind at all. Okay, so you need to watch it because it's really cool. Uh, so it was released from Nintendo during, I guess they were promoting um, Smash Bros. for Wii U. But it was a Link versus Pit. And um, I would love something in that style uh, for Zelda. Honestly, I'm not a fan of a live-action Zelda. Like, I don't do Zelda live-action. Just, oh my gosh. I don't think it'd be handled well. It, it honestly almost reminds me of, like, terrible anime um live adaptations that are on netflix like don't do that i would love star fox in the same vein as fantastic mr fox i think that would be cool um because star fox isn't serious you know i i've never taken star fox serious it's it's kind of more like a like a charming kind of series for me even though sometimes like it can be kind of depressing when like like i remember the end of star fox zero um obviously you know star fox uh, fox because dad is dead <laughs> and like okay. oh <laughs> i don't think i've ever played a star fox oh are you serious i i have played a star fox game but you're gonna be angry about what star fox game i played which one star, star fox Rocky adventure that's not bad star fox yeah adventure but like it's bad. such a but like it's I'm, not a star fox game. it's not a star fox <laughs> game it's a it's a Zel yeah. it's a it's a zelda game with a star fox skin on it yeah i'm pretty sure that was supposed to be like a a game on the N64 that Rare was working on called like Lost Plant, like Lost something. Yeah, Dinosaur then, Planet or something. Dinosaur like Planet, that. yeah. And then they reworked it because Miyamoto was like, "Hey, that would be cool if it was Fox McCloud." Um, but yeah, it's not Star Fox. I mean, it's a good game, but it's not a Star Fox game. But um, kind of sucks though uh, to see the position that Star Fox is in. Like, it's almost depressing of how like, like. It, but, but to be fair, they honestly don't try to. So it's like I don't, I don't even want to hear that crap because like. Because like, they, they've just tried to remake, like, because Star Fox Zero was basically a start a remake of Star Fox 64. Fox 64, yeah. Uh, and, like, so they, we had Star Fox 64 3D, and, I mean, I don't think the they've really... The worst is Command on the DS. Oh, my God. You have to use the stylus to control the R-Wing. Like, it's the it's the Phantom Hourglass of the Star Fox series. Yeah, because it came out, like, right at the beginning of the 3DS cycle. I mean, of the uh, DS cycle, because like well, I no, like right. I remember being Star in Fox middle school. 3D came out at the um. Yeah, it was another the... launch title thing. It was just like they just keep trying to like put it out as a launch title thing to try and drum up interest or like sell or like be like this is this is what this system can do. They're not yeah, really Star like Star Fox. Yeah. So even though I don't think uh, I don't think Star Fox would generally done too well which kind of sucks i'm pretty sure the last um the last um it's a good selling title or one of the better selling titles was Star Fox 64 <laughs> all right um another little tidbit um so mlb the show as you guys know obviously has been exclusive to sony's platforms for quite some time now but it's coming to xbox so mlb the show um I don't know the, uh, the, the, I, I'm assuming it's just literally MLB the show and then whatever following, whatever year it releases in. Yeah. It's coming to Xbox One, same day uh, that it launches on PS4, PS5, and obviously Xbox Series X as well. And something that's really cool about this, they are doing a Jackie Robinson edition. And for every copy sold, they will donate $1 to a charity. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's cool. But, yeah. And uh, I also like how they have uh, on the um, they have a Jackie Robinson edition, which is pretty cool that they're kind of paying homage to that, which is awesome. Um, and to be honest, I'm not a huge MLB fan. But no, it's I mean... interesting to see that game la launch alongside um, the uh, the Xbox One version. It'll be pretty interesting to see how well that does in the Xbox community, or if people are even happy about it. No, I mean like no, tons of people um uh, in the Xbox community are happy about this because. It's like MLB is, or like Major League Baseball or whatever the fan the people that all oh, all oh, like not them because Madden's all oh, I mean like this is totally a move that comes from all oh, and 
from the baseball association or whatever. Because this is, like, it was either, I imagine, like, it's been for going, it's been a PlayStation exclusive for the last 10 years. So yeah. it's just, like, I imagine what was happening was the licensing agreement was coming to the end. And it was okay. either Sony. Well, it's weird, though, because it's still under a PlayStation studio. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting to that. It's just, like, it's either Sony could lose the license for it, and they'd have to come up with something new for Sony San Diego Studios to do, or like the the all MLB was just like, hey, you can you either you either I, this is totally a thing that like the MLB was made push the decision behind. This was not a Sony decision. They were just like, you're gonna release this on Xbox because there's really no other comparative game on the Xbox. It's like by not putting this on the Xbox and just trying to hold on to it as an exclusive, MLB was just leaving a ton of money on the table. It's just like, and I'm not, I mean, I'm sure there are people that just, that bought the PlayStation because it was the, because it had MLB, but I don't, I feel like that was a smaller market that were, that was like a real contributing factor for. But it's just like, I'm sure tons of Xbox owners are going to be happy that they can finally play um, a baseball game that has like all the all of the players that they actually really like and enjoy yeah i i mean i'm always happy if um you know more people get the chance to um play a game which is, is pretty interesting but i think yeah it was probably a pretty strategic move on sony's end to try to keep it in house to some degree yeah this was like it was like sony wanted to keep this in house it was just like it was definitely mlb saying like you're gonna do this or you're gonna lose the license and yeah, it's I mean like they're still gonna make money. I mean like they have to pay that thirty percent or something, all um, publishing fee to Xbox, but like they'll still be making a decent amount of money from it. So, moving uh right along, we have another little piece of news. Now this one isn't as big. It's been speculated for quite some time, but it's been officially um stated from Nintendo. Um, Apex Legends is coming to Switch next month. It'll be, I believe it'll be releasing on March 9th. Uh, so yeah, you can download that and play it for free. It wasn't, um, it wasn't already on the Switch? Apex? Yeah. No, it comes, uh, it'll be coming Mar in next month, March, I believe March 9th. Why did I feel like I saw like a trailer or something or something where it was announced on the Switch? I feel like this uh, was something I that know. already happened. <laughs> Time I'm, is a flat sure circle. Like a, um, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of like free to play first person shoot. Like I know, or not, or third person. I know Fortnite obviously is. <laughs> Excuse me. And there's some others. I mean, I feel like I'm not really too like. I mean, it's it's coming to Switch. <laughs> so like, play it if you want it. I mean, I I might get it just to see how. Because I'm always interested to see how these games run on Switch. Oh. But I probably won't put a lot of time into it. What the... To be honest, I'm gonna. Can I can I sidetrack you? Can sure. We... Can we go back to last week when we talked about all oh, Battle and Wonder World? I saw how that played on the Switch this last week. Oh my god, that is a bad yeah. version. Actually, I downloaded both the um, PS5 and the Switch demo at the same time and played. Um, I didn't even touch the the Switch version after I saw a comparison video. I was like, oh yeah. Uh, and, it, I, and I was so turned off by the demo on the PS5 anywhere. I was like, I'm not, no. Uh, yeah, like, no, like, the Switch version, to me, like, looks how I remember the N64 looking. Like, you get, like, some ooh. of the, like, some of the textures and, like, just, like, the all oh, polygons or, like, the shapes for some of the stuff in the area. I'm just like, that looks like it could almost be on an N64. <laughs> it was just like, it just does not look good at all yeah the game has just left a bad taste in my mouth and i'll get it when it's like 20 bucks don't, just so i can do play it. play through it just don't for the heck it. of it no no but, and here and, and listen to this guess what guess what uh it launches alongside of in japan what oh the, hunter rise. what that game is going to monster hunter rise if uh. they both launch on the same that game is going to die like it might not even sell a copy <laughs> i kid you not I mean, someone will buy it. Owners. It'll probably... Uh, some kid, I mean, some kid's gonna go into the store, 
and he's going to see the pretty box art for Battle and Wonder World. I've not played it, hasn't seen anything online, and he's going to go, go up to his dad and be like, hey, I want to play this game. It looks really cool. Because, like, I tried going back to, like, watching the trailers for that. I was just like, what was I excited about it from this trailer? Because, like, after I... playing the game and, like, watching the trailers, I was just like, what was I excited about here? <laughs> I was just stoked because it was Yuji Naka, and, um, it was for, like, it, it felt like it was getting a big push from Square. So I was like, all right, like, something must be good behind it. And then I played the demo, and I was like, dude, really? Like, good freaking gosh. What, like, what, someone, I heard someone say this past week is just like, this is a, this is a, cream, a game that screams of all. Oh, it got signed on like name recognition alone. Like someone came up to them, yeah. came up to Square, was just like, "Hey, this is my idea for a game." And I was just like, "Oh," and this is the concept art behind it. And they were just like, "Oh yeah, sure, we'll greenlight that." Then it came time to actually like sh to show it, and I was just like, "Ooh, this game isn't good." Yeah, which is just strange because normally Square is pretty, uh, you know, they're sticklers when it comes to they want to make money, um, which is weird that they would be like, hmm, let's see this game because it's probably not going to perform well and they could potentially lose money on it unless it had like a super low budget and they, who knows? Because no. I mean, I think I might have said this to you before, but Square Enix is the best bad developer, in my opinion. It's just like, because like. Well Oh, their games have such a storied of history of being delayed or just being like for me like they're just so hit and miss and i'm just like i don't like sometimes i'll really enjoy a square game and then sometimes i just look at it and it's just like you gotta be kidding me right oh it's just like i don't know it's just like i like i do not have like a good opinion of square at all I mean, honestly, Square is probably one of my favorite developers, but uh, I mean, yeah, they're definitely hit or miss. But I will say, when Square gives a good game, they definitely give a good game. I think the issue Square has, they have a terrible, terrible, like they, they don't know who to give the right direction to a lot of the times, like, which is very frustrating because they'll say, okay, let's develop this game. Um, like, for instance, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts, like, for whatever stupid reason, in the Kingdom Hearts series, it was split between different teams. Don't do that. If 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 you find a formula and it works with the team, stay with that team. People want to see that, right? Not saying, okay, well, the Osaka team will do this, and this team will do that. Like, why do that? Why, well, why, I mean, like, why do that? That's what causes the rift in, like, this, that, and the fourth. Like, have some, keep it straightforward the entire time. And then delays. Of course, they delay stuff all the time. They announce it early. They try to ride the wave, this, that, and the fourth. I mean, a lot Which, of studios you know, could hurt them in the long run, but I feel like for Square, it you're right, it is definitely hit or miss. But I, when they give a good game, man, they give a good game. Stu a lot of studios have developed um, games across different teams. It's just like, I mean, like take Breath of the Wild for example. Like they out, like the Monolith Soft did, like a lot of the landscape and stuff for that game. It's just like it well, depends like on the, like the outsource. But I'm I'm talking about like the core development. Like, yeah, like, I mean, like, you, like you shouldn't like have two teams that are separated working on like the main story, but like you, oh, a lot, like, but like the way you said it, it was just like it sounded like it was just like, oh, like you didn't think like having it split between splitting the game stuff between different studios wasn't something that's already being done. Oh yeah, no, they, they will, they take, like for instance, they, I believe Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 were on the same team, and then after that, they were like, okay, this team will work on this game, and then like, they just, it was all over the place. It was just like. Just like all and, the systems why, it was on. Yeah, and, and exactly, and that's why all the gameplay was radically different in all the games too, it's just like, what the heck? And I mean, they, I'll give them credit, they try, like sometimes they'll, they'll say like, this is quirky, might, it might work, like they'll, they'll, they're definitely not one to, to, to like, if it, if it works, we'll, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it kind of thing, Final Fantasy kind of speaks for that every time they try to change something. And even, um, uh, frick, um. Hironobu Sakaguchi, when he left Square, I mean, he was uh, he was adamant on you know changing things and you know taking a different approach. But uh, the uh, I forget, I don't remember the the uh, CEO at the time, but he was 
He was like, no, dude, we, in this, this I get because during when Final Fantasy, that Final Fantasy 10, I believe was one of the last nine or 10 was one of the last games that Hironobu Sakaguchi worked on before he left Square. But, um, they they you know it costs a lot of money to make to to make these engines and then you make this engine and only use it to you like one game like i would feel like you you would personally want to do more but hearing it was sakaguchi was like no like to the next ceo was like uh no we just spent all this money on this engine and like we could probably use these assets too and that's why we got final fantasy 10 too but i mean yeah square square you're right square is like super hit super super hit or miss but Enough with, uh, actually, speaking of Yuji Naka, uh, so, and the next bit of news, if you guys don't already know, so, Sonic Prime coming to Netflix in 2022, what do we think about that? One, I, before we even start this, don't tell me about something that's coming next year, like, it's just such a weird thing to, like, tweet out, like, hey, Sonic Prime coming to Netflix next year. Like, mean, tell me that, like, closer to 2022. I mean, last week, we had the talk about, um... Roger, I can't remember his name, the last person. Craig, yeah. Yeah, R Roger Craig Smith, or what? Yeah, he stopped voicing um, Sonic. Yeah, but, like, this is, like, I imagine this has something to do with that. It's just, like, they probably wanted a probably. new voice actor for that, and, like, I imagine this is going to tie into some game. But, like, oh, the description for it, like, that I heard was a little bit funny, because it was just, like, he's, like, on a journey of self-discovery as well. It was just, like... I mean, like, that's, I mean, like, a lot of, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of shows that I like that are, like, about self-discovery and, like, oh, Sonic like, Hedgehog. really developing things. <laughs> like, oh, behind me, over this shoulder, is, like, a piece of fan art from Star vs. the Forces of Evil. On this wall over here, I have all oh, fan art from, oh, from, whatchamacallit, from... Oh, you can actually kind of see it in, in the frame from Steven Universe. It's just like, that, like I enjoy the shows, but like, I just, you're going to have to do a lot of work for me to, me to, to think that, hey, let's get a chili dog or whatever. Well, yeah. Sonic, like the Sonic that like I've grown up with and used to isn't like, it's gonna, they're going to have, to, they're going to have to do a lot of work for me to get to where they want to me to start with Sonic. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it'll be an enjoyable just, show. It'll at least be fun. I, mean, I, I watched, uh, I definitely watched Sonic X as a kid whenever I got the chance, but I mean, like, I don't know. I just, I don't see it do too well. And the, the voice actor for Amy Rose also left too. So maybe they are just kind of, uh, clearing everyone out and didn't doing, I mean, honestly, like at this point, like, I don't need, I just want a good Sonic game. I don't even really care. Like, give me a good Sonic game. I don't really care about anything else. It's like, just you like telling me game. that you didn't enjoy Sonic Boom: Rise of Lyric? Uh, actually, I really want to play that, but I can't find it anywhere. I would, I totally want to dive into that just to see. I mean, but it, you can jump, pause the game, then jump again. Uh, I, I mean, I honestly can't even scratch the surface of when it comes to how Sega handles their IPs. It's probably like, I just don't get it. Unless there's, like, something we don't know. Like, I just... I really don't. I mean, of course you have Sonic. Like, they send him off to die every time. I, I don't get it. You have all these IPs they don't utilize. I don't get it. And then you have, like... Uh, they have, like, a legacy... So much legacy titles that they just don't touch at all. It just blows my mind. I do not understand Sega. I really don't. It's like... Oh, my... Like, I, I, it makes my... It hurts my brain. I just, I just don't get it. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is um, okay. So Nintendo has stated they have no new plans for new hardware. Now, I fully agree with this, simply because, as we mentioned earlier, the Switch is almost at eighty million units. The Switch is selling more year over year. So to give you guys an idea of the how, so Nintendo's best year was two thousand eight or two thousand nine. Obviously, when the Wii and the DS was out. The issue is with the Wii, the Wii was extremely popular when it came out. Like, a, a lot of sales in a in a small amount of time. But the Wii died off very quickly. Very, very quickly. The Switch is doing kind of the opposite of that. 
it, it it's it's going up year on year. So for Nintendo to release a pro model, <laughs> excuse me, I don't think it'd be wise to to release a pro model when literally you're selling more of the the traditional model year on year. I mean, also take into consideration we've had no price cuts of the Switch yet. I mean, the, that's not going to yeah. happen. The it well the DS went on. I believe it's like final price was like a hundred dollars or hundred thirty dollars. When the Switch gets to that point, whenever it does, imagine how well it's going to do when it gets to that point. It'll freaking fly off the shelves. And I think when it comes to third parties, I think Nintendo's going to do what they're doing now. They're just going to say develop unique hardware for the Switch. And I think third parties are going to do that because the Switch cannot be ignored anymore. It's that's how well it's doing. Third parties are going to be like, dang, like we need to get. It. I mean, it's the best-selling console in Japan. It's 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 literally the developers are probably going to start prioritizing the Switch at some point and developing unique software catered to the Switch because the Switch is doing so well. When it comes to a Switch Pro, I don't think Nintendo will do a Switch Pro, and if they do, it'll be like the new Nintendo 3DS, like. If Nintendo is going to try to try to compete or get onto the same level as as so, like they they'll lose that battle so quickly, and they know that there's no way they're gonna like they would just get laughed out of the room so quickly. So I don't I don't think they're gonna take that approach. And to be honest, I don't think that third party games sell enough on Switch to begin with for them to warrant going in and manufacturing a pro like. I, I just don't, I don't see Nintendo. And Nintendo's just not known for that. I just I don't they I don't think they're gonna really do a pro model, so to speak. I think if we see anything at some point in time, it'll be the new Nintendo Switch or whatever moniker they use. What do you think I about mean, this though? I think at some point we'll see some sort of hardware revision. Like we're we're not gonna go from the Switch to like the next system. Like they're they're gonna it, it's gonna be a hardware revision that comes out. But yeah, like they're gonna ride this. They're gonna keep riding this wave of if it keeps going up and like they've had a great like this past year they had a crazy all they had crazy sales with New Horizons coming out like they like they had a great year and like the biggest game and they really only shipped like one really big game that really got a lot of headline notice from them like yeah we got like Pikmin we got like Xenoblade and we got or Age of Calamity, but how many people actually talk about those games? It's just like, oh, but like, this whole past year has been, has been New Horizons, New Horizons, New Horizons. And like, they're just gonna ride this wave of it doing well, but then at some point, if whenever we get this console revision, it's when we start getting to the other end of that bell curve, and those price, those um, sales start to dwindle, is when we'll get it. But well, I think we won't be seeing co companies prioritize the Switch. I think we'll see a lot of things like what Capcom is doing. Capcom made Monster Hunter World a year or two, like a few years back, but they still want to put something out on the Switch. So they're making like dedicated software. Yeah, they're going to make dedicated Switch, heart yeah. software. It's just like you'll have your Monster Hunter World on your PS5, but then you're going to have your Monster Hunter Rise or whatever on the switch it's just like because like you see things like like we were just talking about all oh, down wonder world it's just like and like or like a month or two back we talked about the difference between the ver the versions of immortals phoenix rising it's just like they're gonna scale down as much as they could as they can and try and put those games on the switch if possible but i don't like but, like, this will always be the inferior version. So I think we'll either see companies scale down and you'll just have to deal with that whole, that dip in quality. If like, And I imagine that's going to sell to the people that are just playing on the Switch or just have the Switch. And I think there's going to be, there's still a good audience that has that. But I think a lot of companies, like, we'll, we'll also see things like, what I said mentioned with Capcom, we'll see them do one versions. There's gonna be one version that goes on the new on the bigger hardware, and then a, a different game that is purpose built for the Switch until we get any sort of Switch revision. 
Yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, yeah, like I said, I think they're going to make, you know, software that is kind of, you know, catered to to the Switch and just develop um, unique software strictly for the Switch just because um, it, it's, it's obviously proven itself. We have games like Octopath Traveler that have done extremely well. We have Mario Plus Rabbits, which has done extremely well. I don't think... Um, Mario Plus Rabbits was way better than it had any right to be. <laughs> Yeah, that game sold over four million copies. Like, yeah, like it, it, it do you really remember? Well. You remember when the leaks came out for that game, and everyone was like, "There's no way that this is a real game." Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, it was weird because I actually remember I was on vacation in Florida at the time, and I picked it up from a local GameStop, and I was like, "I'll try it on a whim," and I actually really liked it. It was fun. Yeah, yeah it was a super solid game. That was. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was a good time. I would. I would definitely like a. Um, uh, a sequel to that, and they they'll probably you know working on something. Who knows? Mm, I, I don't know. It was planned. a fun one off. I don't know if I like the novelty of it was fun the first time. I don't think I'd go back in for a sequel. Well, you know Ubisoft way, <laughs> so well actually it depends if if no. I mean, if, if, if it was going to have a sequel, it would have been <sighs> out by now because they put out all their games every single year. Yeah. Uh, actually, speaking of Ubisoft, um, the Prince of Persia remake has been delayed indefinitely. Wow, really? Yep. Yeah, I kind of uh, saw that in the news feed today, but I didn't read any of it at all. Yeah. Um, I I guess they need to polish it. I don't know. I, I didn't think it would be... I mean, to be honest, it looked like crap when they first showed it to us. And I remember them saying, like, oh, that's because this, that, and the fourth. And then we got it got delayed. Now it's delayed indefinitely, which sucks, because I would definitely like the... To play that. That doesn't point. mean we'll it's canceled, right? They're just, they're still working on nope. it. Yeah, they said they're still working on it, but it, it's just delayed, and they did not give us a new release date. Yeah, well, so... I mean that's better. It's just like really, if anything has shown us, like if Cyberpunk has shown us anything, is release the game when it's ready. All right, don't be trying to hit the your sales your qu end of quarter or whatever. If you are like, don't make your team crunch to do to get the work done on time is just like do you have your team do your regular 40 hour work week you know get do don't push them super hard and like eventually you'll put out a good game but like if you rush things to market it's just gonna get cyberpunk yeah yeah um we don't mention that <laughs> at, the, I mean, at some is, point is, uh... at some point like as much shit as i talk about cyberpunk like at some point i'm gonna buy it like i'm gonna yeah. do it i mean like and there's, because when and the nice thing is that when you buy that it'll be done yeah like it'll be like the ps5 version that's like optimized and like oh they've released all their patches and everything i mean like like i like on the back of this like i'm not sure if you can read it or like, I even have, like, a cyberpunk reference on this jacket. Like. Like, yeah. Like, it says samurai on the back of my jacket because all, oh, like, it's because, like, most jacket back patches are, like, supposed to be music-based. So I, so this one's, like, if you've been paying attention to this, this was a nerdy, nerdy jacket. But old Samurai is the name of Johnny Silverhand's band from Cyberpunk. <laughs> okay, so moving on to another uh, small bit of news: uh, Mass Effect Andromeda has been officially, I guess, reveal this it slash mean, definitive release date on that I, um yeah it's like early impressions previews that were yeah. that came out this week um which is which is awesome um obviously everyone uh likes mass effect i i i, I don't know mass effect is just one of those series where it's just like everyone loves it um but no, I just I haven't played it. I'll have to get off. I might try um the with the um the uh, legendary edition just because it's one, two, and three. Uh, so that would be nice to um kind of you know 
obviously start the series. It is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. No official release on Switch yet, but there have been some some rumors and some rumblings, so we'll have to see. Um, and if it does come out, I, I, honestly, I've I've heard such good things about the Mass Effect series, so I I might try it out. But I don't know Mass Effect. So just from what I've seen, it doesn't do it for me. What me, about you? I mean, it's. I mean, I'm definitely interested in this Legendary Edition. Being like, cause like, cause if it's like sixty or seventy bucks, like it's like it's twenty some bucks per game. All it by early impressions, it sounds like they're hitting a lot of things that people want from it. It sounds like they're giving it the TLC that it deserves for the most part. I am slightly worried about whether they're like what two of the big butts on that though were like. There is one DLC, I can't remember the name of, that was all, that it, the source code was corrupted on. So it's not going to be a part of the, uh, part of the all remastering. And, but that even goes back to the, when they had released the trilogy before, is like, even back then, this, it was the source code for that DLC because it had been manu it had been outsourced by another studio all it it had been corrupted before. So it's something that's happened before in the past. But also like I've never played it, so like take my my word as a grain of salt. But based off of one of the impressions like someone was saying it's just like they showed off something that was like from the Echo Station DLC or an Echo Station mission, but like when you, or it was like the start of the game, like when you start at Echo Station, apparently like a lot of stuff's going down and like the sky's like red and like it, like it, there's like a feel to it, but they showed off that bit in the early, in the presentation, in like the early previews, and like the sky's blue and like there's a few little ships hanging around. So it's just like, it will this game have the same spirit to it that the games originally did when they came out? So it's like it, they may function better mechanically, but is it going to have all the set dressing that it should? Uh, I sure hope so. I mean, <clears throat> me, so I like, feel like if if we're in this, if people are in the position that like, like we're in. Be a really a chance to get into the series, but um, if you know if if it lacks some of that flair that that those games had that um players have experienced, it might be unfortunate for us because we might not feel the same way when we play through the game. So I guess we'll have to wait and see. I, I don't think it'll be day one for me. Um, I'll yeah, I imagine I'll get this on a sale yeah. as well. So. Last bit of news that I have. Uh, this one's pretty interesting, and this is Nintendo for you. If Nintendo ever does something, Nintendo. So, do you guys even know what Crackle is? Apparently, it's a another streaming service. I've heard of it, but I've never so, looked into it. Crackle to air Playing With Power, the Nintendo story in March. Deadline is reporting that Crackle will air a five-part documentary series based on Nintendo on March 1st. The show is titled Playing With Power, the Nintendo story. So, um, okay, I like this, but what the heck is Crackle? Like... Leave it to Nintendo to like, oh, cool, yeah, we'll like give some people the insight on uh, on um, on us, but put it on Crackle, <laughs> like so so three people can watch it. Like, no, what, what happened here is Crackle went to them and they were just like, here's the pitch or whatever, like, and they sold it to someone at Nintendo. It's just like this wasn't Nintendo going to Crackle, in my opinion. It's just like this yeah, is. You're probably right. This uh, is, but it. I wouldn't be surprised just because Nintendo's just notorious for doing the most out of left field things in the world. Like, oh yeah, we totally like this is such a cool idea. But where will we put it? Hmm. We have Netflix, two hundred million subscribers on there. There's Hulu. Wait, what about Crackle? <laughs> like, okay. I mean, I'll, I'll probably download Crackle if I have to pay for it. I'm not paying for it to watch this. But I mean, like, finally, like I love those the. Uh, I love documentaries and you know documentary on Nintendo would be great. <laughs> I think I'm gonna download Crackle for it. But uh do you have anything for us this week, Dane? Anything you'd like to talk about? We're gonna talk about more sports. We 
and making my dad's dreams come true. Oh, so anyway, this past week that um, who EA announced that they're bringing back NCAA football. Oh, yeah, the college games. Yeah, which like a lot of people are into that. A lot of people are down for that. But all oh, the big story there isn't so much. I mean, like it's good that those games are coming back. There's a big audience that's been asking for them to come back for a while but like the sub story beneath that is like these games will not include any sort of all um, player like any sort of player or um, likenesses or anything like that being included but if you went like went deeper into it ea is building it out so that all, there's like all these different lawsuits and everything that are going on with the NCAA all underneath all of that. That is just like EA is looking into the future and they are building it out. So if these oh, if these lawsuits go the, the way that they think that they're going to go, that they can easily add in all these likenesses or build out all of these things for the for the game. But it's just like it goes into like the whole deeper thing of NCAA double NCAA all players aren't paid by their schools. And a lot of them aren't even paid scholarships. Like you get a few that are on scholarships, but like you have these people that are like working a whole press schedule and things and like doing everything. And like their coaches get paid millions of dollars. And, like, some of them are still paying to go to school. It's just, like, it's... I mean, like, and you can't have a job, be an NCAA player, and go to school all at the same time. It's just, like, which is a bit ridiculous to me. But, oh, so it's interesting that seeing that EA is building out for this eventuality. But, like, the NCAA is just kind of a bad organization, in my opinion. And it's just, like... I'm not a big football player, football plan or anything, football fan or anything like that, but it's interesting seeing EA, like, plan ahead for the future like this. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure the reason the they initially um, got canceled is because they weren't getting paid and they were using their likeness to essentially sell the game. Well, like, and... no, here, I mean, like, the thing is, like, they weren't, they didn't have the likenesses in the game to begin with. Like, even the box art person and the original was, ones? yeah, like, the box art. Like, the, the early ones? Yeah. I the they stopped selling them because the, they, no, they no, no, the no, no, likeness, but they weren't getting paid. No, because the box art person was always someone who had just graduated so that they could pay for the likeness of that person on the box. But if you, you wanted to have the likenesses of all your pla- of the players that were actually on your team. You actually had to go into the um, player creation thing and like make all the player the, all the characters yourself. But like there, was, but apparently there was also a way to like you could do you could download a save off of the internet from someone else that had already done it. Um to. So, like, you could download it from someone else, but it wasn't, like, natively in the game at all. But, like, yeah, like, they they, they went through all these hoops because, oh, because they couldn't do that. And it's interesting seeing this happen, but, like, I don't know all the details off the top of my head, so I can't really give you the full rundown on it. Yeah, I mean... I guess it's, I mean, good on you, like, more football, <laughs> sports. <laughs> sports, I, get the I, thing I, to the thing. Um, I, I don't know, I was, I was like, I, I remember when they stopped the games, people were pretty upset about it, too, and I was just thinking, like, oh, can't you just play men? Like, I mean, I, it's I, different, I because, sure. like, it has the, te- like, your team dances and, like, victory, and, like, fight songs and everything, so it's, like, meant to it's like a whole different atmosphere to it than the the all uh, nfl so like there's like there's a bunch of, like there's game day traditions and stuff like that so it's I mean like and it's people rooting for their teams it's just like you go to mizzou like i'm just bringing up mizzou because 
I listen to Greg Miller all the fucking time. Oh, it's like Greg. Like the reason that I know all this stuff is because like all oh, listening to to them talk about it this week is just like all oh, they they were they like it because it's their team. It's their school. It's whatever. It's just like you have like a lot yeah, of. I, I could get. Yeah, I, I get. I get. I could understand that. It's just like if you went to that school, you actually develop an allegiance to that team to a certain regard. So they may not be keeping up with it still, but like you you may actually like that team, that mascot, those traditions more than you like whatever your local NFL team is. Um another little quick thing that I forgot to mention. Um for PS five owners, the uh the February's um PlayStation Plus games just dropped. So you can download uh, Concrete Genie, which is um, PS4, PS5. You can download the Control Ultimate Edition, which is PS5. And then this one I'm a little trying to figure out on. Uh, so Destruction All-Stars. Um, you can obviously download that today for PS5. So I, I correct me if I'm wrong here, but wasn't Destruction All-Stars going to be a retail release? Yeah. And then they... So now... You c- it's they not. Yeah, it was... was- Originally supposed to be a seventy dollar all re- launch oh. release, and you could have like people like it was like people had pre orders at GameStop and everything, but then they decided to cancel all those pre orders and it was just like, you know what, the game's not ready. We're gonna give it to you for free in February, and like this game, from everything I've heard, it is coming out lukewarm. So, well, is like, going, so are they gonna like release it like digitally and physically, or no? Just, it's like, just digital. It so is. you could oh, so it's only like, I oh, so wait, is it only gonna be through PS Plus? Yep. Or wow, it is um, a PS Plus free to play game that like, well, I'm not sure if it's gonna be if you're gonna have to pay for it later but like it's fully based around microtransactions and it's like there's four different game modes but like they're all pretty much revolve around crashing your car into something else and like okay. it's it well, sounds like it's a that. such a mish match of things like personally i feel like they should have gone more Not for me fortnite based on it but like each you can play as a bunch of different characters and each character has a different like power or ability to them to them and like but and then like you can jump in and out of cars and everything it's just like it doesn't sound like something i'm interested in playing at all i mean like maybe if i was a car person i'd at least hop in and give it a go but there's there's not really anything that i'm seeing there that i'd want to try out yeah i i don't i don't think i would play it what I do really want to play, and I've said this so many times, but I feel like it wouldn't be the podcast unless I said it at least once. I really want to play Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> yeah. I have yet to play it. I'm just waiting on a sale. It's digitally, you can get it for 40 bucks, but I've seen it physically. It was on sale at one point for 30 So I'm going to wait till it gets 30 bucks physically, and I'll pick it up. But I really want to play it so bad. But I'm going to wait. I mean, it, I mean, I'm like having like this weird thing. Whereas it's like I'm going through and I'm accidentally like playing a bunch, like I didn't know that well, Infamous was also made by Sucker Punch until I started playing it, and like I ha- I went and played Jack like the other week and oh that's, a, that's made uh, Naughty by Naughty Dog, Dog. Dog. and I was yeah. just like I feel like I'm Sucker go- Punch was um uh Sly Cooper. Yeah, as well. So it's like, so it just like feels like I'm in this weird loop of like playing games from the developers of like the like the people that made like the mascot platformers that were on the PlayStation originally. Isn't interesting how all of those isn't it really interesting how Sucker Punch, Naughty Dog, Insomniac, um, Insomniac, and uh, I feel like I'm missing one more. But those those like they're heavily rooted with PlayStation. They all started with PlayStation with great mascot platformers that were really good it's just like weird to me how all of them kind of had the same roots and they're still in the same place like like insomniac spyro naughty dog crash uh, but like Sucker punch 
and they all kind of tra- tra- transitioned at the same time. Well, like, like I mm-hmm. think Sucker Punch is like the last to that party, really. Cause, yeah, like, because they started with Sly in- Cooper. Infamous, the no, Infamous though, like it felt like, I mean, like it was in an era where I wasn't really playing paying much attention to video games in general, let alone PlayStation. But I was just like, I don't really hear anyone like banging the pots and pans together for Infamous at all. But like, I'll be honest, and this is gonna sound bad. Um, I just don't like the box art. The box art just kind of throws me off. It just looks so generic. Yeah, it looks like it does. I mean, like, I even started Second Son earlier today because, oh, oh because, oh, at first light like, you play fetch and apparently fetch, and I'm just like, let me just say I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a bit of a weeb right now. Fetch is my nominee for my 2021 waifu of the year. <laughs> it's just like I was just like such a fan of fetch. It's just like there's even all. Oh, like a little Mean Girls reference in there. Like one of the well, trophies is called That's So Fetch. And I was like, 2021, let's make Fetch happen. Um, but is her actual name? No, or it's like it's like a name? nickname or something. Okay, that's what I was but thinking. like, Wait a minute. but like she goes by Fetch. And like at one point, okay. like at the beginning of the game, they say like the person that's like oh, part of the military group like calls her by her first name and by her actual name is just like you can call me fetch so like for for me like that's her name all right oh you know what i just thought of you know what infamous kind of reminds me of do you remember a prototype who did prototype i can look that up for you sucker punch. did sucker punch do prototype i don't think that, so I because like i, I, I looked up sucker punch's games oh the other day, because I was just like, what else? Um, prototype game. Wiki, open up the oh, Activision. Oh, they, no, Activision published it. But what the, f- what is prototype? It's also a sequel to it. Hmm. Yeah. Radical Entertainment. Okay, yeah. No idea. Yeah. I, 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 for some reason, I think of prototype when i see um no i mean like i was thinking about that as well because like the box art kind of looks similar because it's like okay it's like one person like with like energy around them or whatnot but like the box art just never looked really all that appealing but like even in produce and infamous second son like there is a heavy influence around like punk culture and like graffiti art because like all as fetch you do all like energy graffiti with her hands and like she does some fun um graffiti art like one of her things is just, like she really wants a short-tailed burmese cat and like at one point you do graffiti art and you like all oh, draw burmese sh- what i imagined is a short-tailed burmese cat like pouncing along a wall but in infamous second son you do stencil art this is like the one thing i don't like about this game so far it's just like it doesn't. It feels a bit generic, but like whenever you do stencil like art, trackpad. No, no, the, uh, no. Gotcha. You you hold the controller sideways like this, and then you have to shake it like you're shaking a spray can, and then you hold R, and you move your controller like Ooh. this to paint like a stencil. And I'm just like, I'm not a fan of this. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm I'm not either, but it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a little. Oh, but like, also the main character in um, and from his second son, like he has a he has the best like mind. Like he even like he even does the thing where like his vest is like it's straight most of the way, but then like, uh, like the yoke is black as well, and then like there's some studs on it. So it's just like there's a vibe that they're going for there that I really appreciate. But Fetch is apparently in like the beginning of Second Son. All three all of these conduits as they're called escape and one of them is fetch so i'm just like i want to get to the part in the game where i get to see fetch again and there's an achievement called make fetch proud so i'm pretty sure she's pretty heavy in the story at some point so since we are uh on the topic of um tro- like uh, playstation trophies 
I think I've, I said a while ago I planned on going for the platinum of Sackboy because I really like Sackboy. Like I like I said, I, it's very rare platinum a game. Like it takes a lot, just because there's some trophies that are just a, like purely a waste of my time. Like there's some trophies where it's like jump five thousand times and turn to the left. I'm like I'm not doing that for the sake of like getting like forget that. Um, but so it's like it's so it's very rare I platinum a game unless I truly really really like it and it resonates with me and sackboy resonated with me a lot and i really liked it but i gave up on trying to obtain the platinum for that there's a couple more trophies i could get um they're I'm all like, but like you have to do a lot of multiplayers yeah and the last trophy the gold trophy that you have to get so there's these free and it, what annoys me what really annoys me about it is the the, the knitted night trials so there's 15 i believe 15 i think might be a little more a little less oh no might be a little less but anyway so i got a gold ranking on all 15 thinking that was the platinum so i gold ranked all 15 of those which was pretty difficult and then i was like wait where's the trophy and then i looked it was like oh no 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 you don't even have to gold rank all those so i would just waste the time doing that the actual trophy is the 16th one is you play through all 15 of them one by one and I was like, dude, what? And I was looking on a website. It was like PlayStation Trophies, Power X, like something. And they were like, oh, it's not that difficult. I'm like, what? It's yeah. extremely difficult. You literally, and you're timed on these too. And you've seen me play some of them. You're you're timed on them and they're extremely difficult. And let's say you get to like the 12th one and die, you go all the way back to the beginning. I mean, like, that's, I just like, that's part of my problem with like all... I mean, I picked up First Light because I was reading a list that said that it was like a 10-hour platinum trophy. It was just like, oh, it's an, e it's an easy platinum for you to get or whatever. But like, like, most of the trophies in that game are tied to these challenge rooms that all, that are, I mean, like, they're not super difficult, but like, you gotta invest some time to actually get good at them. Like, I think, like, there's five trophies that are get all five a score of five hundred thousand in each of the trophy in each of the all challenge rooms so i've gotten i think i've gotten three out of five of them done so far but like you also have like all these other side challenges that you need to do so there's like 60 global challenges to do and i think i have like three more of those to do and like you have to have earned a total of 10 million all points altogether playing the challenge room. So even if you do get 500,000 on your first playthrough of all of those, that's only going to be a quarter of what you need to do. So you still need to like, there's like ones that like you, so you still have to play a decent amount of it. I'm going to, try and whittle away at it but i can't sit there and play that do that all day it's just like i can't yeah. like at a certain point like i have to put down the controller and walk away from a challenge room because like those like those challenge rooms like once you start getting up there they are difficult like it is swarming with enemies and like they're tough enemies it's just like and like they're just like at these massive numbers that it's just like yeah it reminds me of uh, Astral Chain. I wanted to hundred percent that, but um, some of the uh, at the end of the game, you're essentially at like the the headquarters, and they give you like um, a list of uh, missions you can just go on and and take on. And some of those are brutal. Like the difficulty is just like the, it's it's like it it's like good like tricky man like super enemies are tough it's waves of like it's like you finally beat that one enemy and it's like here's five more of that same enemy you finally beat and it's like okay me, it's, me, yeah, it's, you're right sometimes you gotta walk away like okay i'm not i can't yeah I'm it's to spend hours on it yeah it's just like i can i can do a sit and do a challenge room like two or three times then i'm just like okay i can this is it for today. I got to do something that's a bit more relaxing than this. Also, I completely forgot. Um, now, this is obviously a little late, but if you don't know, Atelier Ryza 2 uh, came out on the 26th. 
And if you are interested in, I would highly re recommend picking it up as soon as you can because I can tell you that they're not going to make a lot of copies of this physically. So yeah, grab it while you can. I, and I forgot to mention that because I wanted to mention that last week. Um, Pick five, last... save a franchise. Yes. Um, one little thing I kind of wanted us to just uh, have a quick discussion we can end off on here. Now, this is actually a, pr a pretty good part to kind of just end things on because it's pure speculation. So a while ago, a... Um, I don't... Okay, it's called Pokemon Centro. I don't know if they have a YouTube. I know they have a Twitter, but they handle Pokemon stuff. Now, they said they have someone who's close to the... Po that worked close with the Pokemon company saying that we will see Diamond and Pearl remakes this year. Which at this point it's like guaranteed, right? I mean, they've they they make a ma a mainline game hits store shelves every year, um, and if 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 they're gonna keep doing what they've been doing since two thousand three, it's going to be a remake. And if we, what would the next remake be? Diamond and Pearl. Um. I think this is extremely likely. I think we'll see it. It's Pokemon's 25th anniversary for Pete's sake. Um, and I'm assuming we'll get a Pokemon related direct here soon. I'd probably I, say in this month. And yeah, I'd say in the next like two weeks. Weird, there's like some weird space event thing that they were doing with like NASA or something like that, believe it or not. And then obviously Diamond, uh, Dialga and, and Palkia, um, space and time. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I honestly, I'm, I, I put a lot of stock into this. I, I think it's it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. But if they do it, just, do it, just, just, just don't screw it up. Yeah, <laughs> like, on this one. yeah, I think like there was a news release like a week or two ago where like Katy Perry was going to do, uh, is doing a yeah, new I'm song used, for Pokemon. Yeah, she was like promoting with Pokemon or something. Doing yeah, a song. But like, I think in the past, well, for the po for the Pokemon directs. We've usually gotten them like mid February, so I imagine in the next two weeks we'll probably see something from them. Like it'll probably be like a Tuesday or a Thursday, either this week or next week, where they come out and they say like, "Oh, here's a director." Like there'll be like a five to ten minute video and it'll, like show off all whatever it is that we could possibly, if like we are getting a Pokemon game this. This year, this is, it'll be like a trailer for that or something. Or if we don't get it then, we could, I imagine maybe we might see it like a month or two after the poke, after Pokemon Snap comes out. Cause I think, because if, because Nintendo's general, like for the past year, he has been holding things close to the chest. So I think. Maybe they like not to sabotage the sales of Pokemon Snap. They might hold off on any big announcement until post Pokemon Snap. But that's that's about it. That's all I think. I'd love to see a Pokemon Platinum. I'd love to see where they go with it. Like how much are they going to remake, or how much is, will it stay true to the original games? Like are they going to switch like? switch things and try and make it more of a more organic layout or are we going to go back to seeing the grid based layout that diamond and pearl were originally i think they'll probably take the the first approach um but i just hope they stay true to the to the originals in the sense of um of uh like i don't want them to, to i don't want it to be like a let's go kind of thing where it's like where it's I, I i want it to be a a pokemon red and blue to pokemon yellow i would like, pretty, like virtually the same game with like little tweaks here and there i don't want it to be like a a let's go in the sense of like set in the same region set in the same universe kind of thing but kind of its own thing in a sense because obviously gary played a different role um red played a different role you aren't you, i would i would just like them to because i like diamond pro a lot it's my favorite region uh favorite um uh duo of games so i would really hope that they kind of just stay true to that just give us like a really faithful remake honestly i don't i don't want them to stray but give us also like a faithful remake but obviously like things that have been um like character customization and all that stuff like put it in there but like in terms of 
overall plot and everything like that i would hope they would do it and also if they do i would like them to take the um omega ruby and alpha sapphire excuse me approach where we kind of get a a um a, like a because that kind of had emerald splashed in it too with the um the um the post game yeah um yeah so i would like them to do that maybe like add in the distortion world uh, like the, like what was in platinum? Um, yeah, I think really nice. I think you could have gone in. I think you could have gone into the distortion world in the in diamond and platinum, but like it wasn't like a part of the main game. Like getting Caillou room they, and like have it at all. Really? The, okay. Yeah, the distortion world was uh only in platinum. Was, um, only in platinum. Yeah, okay. and then um um I want to say. Uh, I know, like Team Galactic had a big. They had a little more focus on team. There was a little more with uh with uh Team Galactic too in Platinum. Um, I mean, uh, what I would really like to see is, I'd like them to do a uh, Azure Flute event added into it. Oh, with the, an actual Arceus event. Yeah, so it's like I'd like to That'd see cool. them do something Tell with me, that. Did and you use an action replay as a kid to no. do that. I did. I my friend Alan. I think one. I got one from like some like a friend traded me one, but like the one that I have right now that's sitting in my Pokemon bank is the, the legit one that like when what they was that twenty sixteen? Yeah, which I missed. I missed. I missed so many of those because the GameStop employee. I no told, like I didn't know until like midway through uh twenty sixteen. I was like, oh, so I missed like all, and I missed the good ones. Like I missed Mew. I missed. Well, I got Celebi later through, but not through that event. Um, I am a an... reason I got Darkrai, but I can't find him. I am super annoyed. I was signed up for the gamer for the all uh, for the trainer club thing, and I did not get my Zarud code. So now I am down one Pokemon, and I am upset Dude, about that. I forgot all about that. Oh crap! Are they? Uh, like I, I got like I really got apparently if you didn't get your code, there was like a window of time to like email them and be like, hey, I didn't get a root code. I wanted a root code, but apparently that window had already sailed as well. So if you know anyone that knows as a, how to get as a root, I'd like that, or hopefully we'll get a legitimate one. To be honest, though, I. Uh... I got a video that's coming out literally in two days about Pokemon, but all I'll say it's just um like in terms of like recently, I just uh Sword and Shield just oh, no, I don't really I mean, play like I barely play those anymore. I, I mean, didn't even, I'll be honest, I didn't even finish the last DLC. I just kind of want to see an end to mythical Pokemon at this point. It's just like I want to these... see an end to legendary Pokemon. Like make them like I mean legend. Legendary Pokemon again. Now it's just like you get a legendary, you get a legendary. It's like, like take me back to his. Like remember playing Fire and Leaf Green where they were actually kind of difficult to get. And yeah. They weren't just like they weren't like six thousand in every game. Oh yeah, I mean like I think I went really off the rails with Diamond and Pearl because I think that's when like Diamond and Pearl were like you had like the three spirit like yeah, you the, had. Yeah. Yeah, you had like the you had your three legendaries, and you had like the three um four legendaries, three um as uh Misprit, U- Uxi, um Uxi as Elf, uh Dioga Palkia, and that's Arceus, also Tina, and also that's what, when they really added in like the mythicals or whatnot, or like there was Cresselia, there was um yeah, Darkrai, Dark there was Shaman, or. Oh. I think Genesect was a legendary, right? Well, uh, or Heatran was a was Heatran a pseudo legendary or a legendary? Because Heatran was in, um, I think in Gen Four. I, I think say he was a pseudo. I don't think he was a legit legendary. I, I could be wrong on that. Yeah, I think also. Well, uh, I mean, also wasn't like Spirit Tomb. Manaphy. Um, Manaphy's a, um. Oh no, Manaphy was legendary. Spirit Tomb's a pseudo legendary. Yeah, because legendary. like in like. Getting Spirit Tomb in the original game was a pain in the butt because you had to like yeah. do all this on lo- online stuff I and everything. That, that quirky like weird things you had to do. No, oh, that was that's just I like, like it's not even worth it. It's just like you got to do like it's so not, much stuff. Like it's, it's just, not, but I liked it. I don't. I'm not a fan. 
It was like... it, it, the, the setup was awful. Oh, the setup was fun, but the payoff was terrible. I like, I just enjoyed like all the like the quirky. Like, it reminded me as a kid, like going through the guidebooks and figuring out like, like for like freaking the Braille stuff with um the the Reggies. Like, I love that stuff. That stuff was awesome. Um, but yeah, that's about it for me. Do you have anything uh, you want to touch on before we head out here? Uh, no, I think that's like really it. I think the big stuff for me. Was this week was this, was talking about the sports stuff? That's the stuff that really kind of grabbed my attention for the most part. Um, yeah, and I didn't really make any notes because you said you were doing the notes this week. So that, that's right. about it. Yeah, that's it for me. All, All right. right. Well, same place, same time next week. All right. Well, and, and please check out our Instagram or our fate or Twitter poll. Oh. There, those are at the top of the video or in the description if you're listening on podcast. Yeah, and we'll see you next week then.